Hi, I'm Megan Duffy. For centuries, other cultures have used plant medicine to heal. And today, with all the adverse side effects of pharmaceuticals, many people are looking for an alternative holistic approach to healing. New studies by Johns Hopkins and other scientists around the world are showing huge benefits with MDMA, ketamine, and psilocybin for depression, PTSD, anxiety, and near-death patients. I'm super excited to share with you Rack Razam as the world's leading experiential journalist writing about and helping shape the emergence of a new cultural paradigm in the 21st century. A writer, film producer, and culture maker, he bridges the world of shamanism, consciousness, and popular culture. Thank you so much for joining us, Rack. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So tell me a little bit about your experience and how you came into this. So I was a... Um, a freelance writer in Australia and I was looking at issues about consciousness and spirituality and I discovered ayahuasca. So I went to Peru and I uh, was doing some articles and it turned into a book on ayahuasca culture in 2006 called Ayer Awakenings and I fell yeah. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, well it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, one thing's led to another and I've you know, been making documentaries and media about shamanism and consciousness and plant medicines um, and sort of that new paradigm that's coming in based on a lot of old earth wisdom. So what do you think are the main differences between the way Western medicine approaches healing and some of the indigenous shamanic work? Mm. Well, you know, essentially the Western medical paradigm is, um, is big pharma. It's very pharmaceutical based. There's yeah. been a lot of great benefits from very targeted medicines and pharmaceuticals. Yeah. But there's also some type of reliance upon this external thing to do the healing. Yeah. So in the indigenous understanding, what I learned in Peru with the people there, they have um, a, a cornucopia, like an abundance of medicines in their plants. They understand that food is medicine, that these plants are, um, have medicinal properties, but they don't just say they have um, chemicals in them. They say it's all about relationship. Basically the higher energetic selves, the spirits, if you will, the plants, um, enter into an agreement, a relationship uh, with the student, the human student. They work on a physical level. We have a physical body, but we also have uh, energetic bodies. So on an energetic level, the, the higher energy selves, the spirits of the plants come and they, they heal us, they remove blockages. There is a lot of progress, you know, in what they're calling now the psychedelic renaissance, which is basically the legal medical-led um, crusade almost to bring psychedelics back into the medical fold. So oh, there's a great <laughs> organization called MAPS, the Multidisciplinary yeah. Association of Psychedelic Studies. They've been pioneering for 35 years now or so um, wow. this work, and yeah. they have secured FDA approval for working with MDMA, which is lab-based, and psilocybin, which comes from the earth naturally, the magic yeah. mushrooms. Um, to work with these substances to help cure severe PTSD, anxiety, depression, uh, late stage uh, cancer patients or terminally ill patients which have anxiety or fear of death and dying. And yeah. in the legal tests they've been doing, there's been such proven efficacy of these substances to alleviate that anxiety. And it does that because it reconnects. One last question I think a lot of people would be interested in is what is the difference between some of these different, you know, plant medicines, peyote, ayahuasca, 5-MAO, DMT, um, what are some of the differences you think that separate them? Well, th there can be quite profound and distinct differences between the plant medicines and, you know, number one, I'll just come back a step and I'll say I'm not necessarily promoting these things and I don't say they yeah. are for everyone, um, but what we're saying is there is a movement of awareness in the West that these um, these plant medicines can be very healing and very connecting for people. So ayahuasca is probably the one which has gotten the most press over the last uh, decade or more. Ayahuasca is a visionary medicine. It contains NNDMT, which can be very visionary of not just colors and shapes, but sort of like whole like virtual reality type yeah. of um, scenarios. Um, yeah. But the number one thing is it's very healing. It's a purgative, it cleans out. 
um, and it can be very much bringing unconscious material to the, to the surface of the mind to release and to clear out the vessel. Magic mushrooms, of course, um, which have been around for you know, thousands of years, uh, can also be very visionary, very connecting. The 5-MeO-DMT and the Buffalo Various Toad is very much considered to be like the God molecule or something which connects you to the source consciousness within, lowering the mind. I guess that commonality is these things are essentially helping lower the default mode network and helping uh, connect us to ourselves, to great spirit, to that feeling of unity or oneness in the world, to belonging. And so in some senses they can lead us home to that center where we're all one. And that is where the real medicine begins. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>